let's bring, bring in Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty. Senator, it looks like, it's great to see you, by the way. It Likewise, looks like Liz. the president's sweeping agenda. It's good to see you. It's not just infrastructure. It's reform on guns, vote reform, D.C. State, statehood, immigration and police reform. It looks like all of that is stalling out right now. It's not going to get it. Does, is the far left to blame? Well, I think they're touting the, the message from the far left of their party. This is not what mainstream America wants, Liz. I can't believe the majority of the Democrat Party wants some of these extreme policies. So they listen to the loudest, maybe the most vocal minority in their party. But what they're putting forward are policies that don't make sense for America. And I think that's where they're seeing the pushback right now. They can't even get their own party together, much less 10 senators on the Republican side. You know, Nancy Pelosi can't afford to lose even three votes. That means the squad does have inordinate power. The far mm -hmm. left is saying, go it alone. They're saying, ram it through via budget reconciliation. Are they going to do that? You know, President Biden told the New York Times that he is not signing on. He's not a progressive. He's not signing on to the far left agenda. So are they going to try to go it alone? Can they? Well, if they do, it'll be another example of the bait and switch that we got from the election. You know, Biden ran as a centrist, as a moderate. Uh, you remember what he said during his inauguration speech. But all they've done, they've only passed one piece of legislation, Liz, and that's this $1.9 trillion, quote, coronavirus package that had very little of anything to do with coronavirus treatment and had everything to do with their socialist agenda. Again, this is far left policy that's being rammed through, and they use this budgetary trick called reconciliation so that they can push it through on a 50 50 basis, bringing in Kamala Harris to solve the tie. They need to remember, this is an evenly divided Senate. We're going to push back hard at every, at every point to make certain that when we talk about infrastructure, we're talking about real infrastructure. They can't even decide what infrastructure is at this point. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is we, we, we saw stocks today, again, up in a broad advance, 95% mm -hmm. of the S&P 500 reporting better than expected earnings. There's fears that inflation is upon us. Um, you know, Wall Street is talking about inflation stocks to buy. But look at this. We have Obama's top economist, Jason Furman. He's now at Harvard. He co-authored a study that says paying people not to work with bigger unemployment benefits could be keep from, keeping people from getting a job, also the threat of getting COVID at work. So that's Jason Furman, Obama's top economist, saying that, too. Well, it's uh, clear as day to a business person like me. Uh, this is exactly the wrong policy to extend unemployment, plus stop unemployment through September means that our small and medium-sized businesses are competing against the federal government to get these employees to come back to work. The larger employers, you know, what they're doing is poaching the, the, the employees from the smaller companies. And then what's happening? We've got this flood of people coming across the southern border. The smaller employers are sitting there thinking, gosh, do I hire somebody into the table or do I let myself yeah. go out of business? It's a tough situation all the way around. And the, the Biden policies are creating this. You know, and it's interesting, final point is that the taxpayers are running away from the exact same policies the Biden team wants to enact. They're running away from it at the state level. But these are the policies that they're trying to push through at the federal level. You're seeing four million people leaving California, New York, yes. Illinois, Michigan, New Jersey, flooding into Texas, Ohio, Florida, Arizona, and Tennessee, because they see these policies coming down. Your final word. I think people vote with their feet. And you take a conservatively run state like Tennessee that's thriving. They see what we're doing with no state income tax, with proper regulatory okay. approach for, you know, a business friendly environment where companies can come and grow. You know, they're attracted to that. That's why we're seeing so many people leave these bankrupt states like California, like Illinois, like Michigan, and move in droves to Texas, Tennessee, and others. Okay. Senator Haggerty, thanks for joining us. Come back Wonderful soon. Wonderful to be with you again, Liz. Thanks.